Welcome to the sixth episode of How to Think Script. We are TOSindicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. So far this week, we've used the Volatility Box to make over $1,600 trading just two contracts per trade. Get started with the 30-day risk-free trial on our website at TOSindicators.com slash Volatility Box. Over the weekend, we released our version of the V-score indicator, which is more commonly known as the Z-score distance between price action and VWAP. This concept has been around for quite some time, and the formula is well documented online. Um, if you'd like to do a Google search, you should probably search something like Z-score distance between VWAP, uh, and you'll see a list of all the paid and free indicators that are available to learn more about what the concept actually is. This was by far um, our most popular download is one of the things that we did is we took the best pieces from all the different v-scores, combined them, and we also added in our own bells and whistles, uh, things like a label that actually tells you what the price is, um, things like clouds that actually let you see the trend um, over the past X number of bars that you dictate, uh, and a lot more that we capture on our website, tosindicators.com slash indicator slash v-score. This v-score is free to download. Uh, but after I think a lot of our members downloaded it, uh, they wanted, obviously, the very next thing, a scan. And that's what we're going to be spending uh, much of today building. We'll build scans, and the scans uh, will be reversions back to the mean from both sides, so whether we're above zero or below zero and then headed back to the mean line. Uh, but also, as a result of how we wrote the code, we can now also start to use these clouds in our scans to measure what the most recent trend has been uh, and use that to then, say, determine if we'd like to buy pullbacks at the zero, uh, the one, the two, so on and so forth. So with that, let's actually get started with the scans. Let's start by uh, opening up the studies icon, uh, or the studies pane rather, uh, and we'll edit the code for the v-score, and we'll copy and paste the entire code into a custom scan. So next, we'll click the scan tab, and here we'll choose add study filter, and scroll on over to the bottom, clicking custom. In custom, we click the second tab, which says Think Script Editor, and here we can copy and paste this code in. What you should see is that this gives us a lot of errors, or it gives us one error right now, and that's because this code is a little too complex for the scans to handle. So let's clean that up. We can get rid of the alerts because we don't need that, nor do we actually need to see anything um, physically on the chart, so we don't need any of the painting strategy code um, or any of the add cloud or add label codes. So we'll get rid of add cloud, and we'll also get rid of the add label. Now, the error that we see is exactly one plot expected. And that's because we have quite a few different plots here, and we also have two plots at the end in which we uh, share both the bull signal and the bear signal. Let's start by first having our bull signal scan, then we'll move on to our bear signal scan, and then we'll go back and um, just check to see whether or not we've reverted back to zero v-score means um, being either above or uh, below the mean respectively uh, on the previous bar. And so that will be a simple scan, but the bull signal and the bear signal scans will be a little bit more intricate. Okay, so to get started with the plot error, we'll start by changing all of these plots by, to defs or definitions. And so once we ch choose change that to def, we'll change 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, as well as our positive and negative ints. And we have one more left, which is our bear signal. And so our first scan will be for the blue, a bull signal, and that's why we have that plotted. One more change that we need to come in here and make is to change this negative 2 to say 1, and to change the double NAND to say 0. Let's cover what this uh, signal actually means one more time before we run the scan. So the bull signal will plot true and we'll see all the results of anything in which the v-score has consistently been above uh, the zero standard deviation line over the past 120 bars, which we set up here, if you remember, 120. Um, then we will make sure, if we go back down, that the v-score is now approaching the mean and we use 0 0.3 for good measure. We also verify that in the previous bar, the v-score was also above zero, so we know that we were above the mean, in fact, uh, and it wasn't just a cloud remain. Um, and finally, we'll make sure that there isn't a ton of selling pressure by verifying that the CCI is greater than negative 100. With that, let's click OK and run the scan. OK, so you see that there's quite a few different results here. Um, before we dive into the results, make sure you save the scan so you can save each one as a separate scan. 
So we'll click save scan, save scan query uh, and save it as the vScore scan bullish signal. We've already saved it, so we'll skip this. Um, okay, so let's verify that this actually works. We'll choose Amazon on this chart and pull it up on a daily. And if the scan worked correctly, then we should see a bullish signal plotting on the daily chart in Amazon. Let's take a look. Okay, so here is a daily chart of Amazon, as you can see right up here. Uh, here is today's bar. And we see that there is, in fact, a bullish signal. We've been consistently above uh, the mean on the V-score, consistently above. And finally, we're getting our triggers based off of a reversion to the mean um, to go long if you believe that Amazon would go up from here. Now, let's try creating the same scan for the bearish side. So the, to change that, we'll come back into scan. We'll click this edit icon right here. And now we scroll to the bottom, and this time we'll change the bullish signal to be a def, and we'll change the bearish signal to become a plot. We apply the same exact changes that we did over here, uh, where we changed the 2 to a 1 and the double NAND to a 0 to essentially validate the, or to turn this condition into a binary condition um, where it'll plot the results where there's a bear signal that's true uh, and it'll skip anything where it's false. Uh, this is the exact opposite, uh, or it verifies the exact opposite as, a bull, as our bullish signal, where we verify that we, in fact, were below the, stand, uh, the zero uh, mean line for quite some time over the past 120 bars. We are now approaching the V-score mean, uh, and we use 0.3 once again for good measure, and that there isn't an, an incredible amount of buying pressure, and we use uh, the CCI at its default settings, and we verify that it's below 100 um, for that condition. Now we can click OK, come back in here, we'll save this scan query, and we'll change this to bearish signal, and click Save. And now we scan this, and no results, which makes sense. It's highly unlikely that on the day where the markets are down almost a little bit more than 2.5%, that we would be finding favorable entries to go short on a pullback. Uh, and so the scan makes sense, um, and with that, we now have two scans under our belt. We have the bullish signal scan and the bearish signal scan, both of which have a relatively stringent uh, group of criteria and filters that it must pass through to pass the scan and show us results. Now let's say that you wanted to widen up the scan and really just look to see for anything or scan for anything where the V-score was positive before uh, and is now pulling back closer to the mean. So let's go ahead and write that. We'll scroll here to the bottom. We'll copy and paste this bull signal in and create one more plot. We'll change the bear signal plot to def, and now we'll make this our primary plot, and we can rename this just signal. Here, we can come in and delete all of the cloud stuff and go straight to the v-score. And so here, we're looking to see whether or not the v-score is less than 0.3, and if the v-score was greater than zero, uh, and we can also remove, uh, in, the, in the previous bar, sorry, and we can also remove the CCI. If this condition is true, so essentially, if we were above the mean and we're now pulling back to below 0.3, um, which is close to the zero line, then return true, else return false. We'll click OK and run the scan. What we should expect, or what we expect rather, is a lot more results here because we've widened the net. And that's exactly what you see. We have 47 results here. And let's take a look just to see if this makes sense. We'll take a look at Nike. Um, so we come in here, we choose Nike. And you see that. You see that our previous bar, we were above zero, and here we've now pulled back to the mean. We also have a bull signal. Let's say that you wanted to know the exact price at what the zero standard deviation of this mean represents. Well, with most z scores, you have no idea, and you could just guess that we're somewhere there. However, with our version of the v score, you can simply come into the study, right click, click Edit Study, and once the menu pops up, in the dev stop, we'll change this from 1 to be 0 because that's the price that we care to look at right now or the price that we'd like to understand. We click 0, click OK, and you see that the price is updated where we know that at the zero standard deviation line, price is equal to $80.83. We're currently at $81.19. So you could see how you may think that you were close to the zero standard deviation line, but here's the actual um, price which you could have seen well ahead of time and had your order parked there if this was your condition to actually go long. That's the power of having these labels here. Now, let's come back in. We'll save the scan now that we know it works, and we'll call it um, bull uh, wide, we'll call it v-score scan wide bull signal. 
we'll click save and we'll go ahead and come in and edit this to repeat the same for the bearish side we'll copy this in paste this code and now we can delete the previous bullish signal and we can change this def to a plot and change this variable to a signal and repeat the same process where we delete everything else outside of the actual v-score checks and so here you see uh, we'll also get rid of the cci and so we check to see whether or not um, the v-score was it was above zero or below zero rather in the previous bars and is now pulling back to within the mean if so return true otherwise return false let's click ok and so if you remember with our bearish scan we saw zero results we should see more results here now that we've widened the net let's see if that's true or not one more fix that we need to make uh sorry that i completely forgot is we need to come down here and we actually need to check if the v-score is greater than or equal to minus 0.3 because we are we care to actually short anywhere above that so with that we'll click ok and rerun the scan okay and you see we have three results here edit tza and vxx let's take a look at each uh let's take a look at edit rather and we see what we would expect um we were below the mean and now we pulled back to within the mean and we're slightly above it right now um, but we're also at a point which would otherwise be considered an entry once again we can change the standard deviation to be zero but now let's say that you did go short here and you wanted to figure out your target which might be where we've previously held support which is this negative one standard deviation line well how do you actually set in your prices ahead of time to plan this trade in any sort of intelligent manner so let's go ahead edit and we'll come in and we'll change this the label to show us what the price would be at the negative one standard deviation you see that our target could be something like 2139 if we were to target a move back to the negative one standard deviation line well what does the stop look like we could repeat the same process on the opposite side where we change this uh, standard deviation label to show us one and we now see that the one standard deviation or where price would be hitting this one standard deviation line um, the price would be 2852 and with that, you can see how these labels can help you effectively plan a trade, plan your stops, your targets, and your entries all ahead of time. And you can use any one of these four scans to help you find opportunities in the marketplace. We hope this helps. Uh, as always, all of these scans are available for free on our website for download at tosindicators.com slash indicator slash vscore scans. Um, the link is also available in the description box below. Um, we hope this is useful and it helps you find trade opportunities using the V-score and that our version of the V-score helps uh, provide some additional value to you as well. Thank you and see you next time.